before me. He goes before me. Defender behind me. Defender behind me. Y'all been practicing. I won't fear. I won't fear. Filled with anointing. I'm filled with anointing. Hi. My cup's overflowing. Good morning, everybody. No weapon can harm me. I'm not a singer. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Oh, praise God. I see your comments. Good morning, everybody. We're just going to wait just a minute. <laughs> I love this song. If you know somebody this morning that may need this, make sure you share it. And it's not often I say share. <laughs> but um, I have something to share this morning that I know for a fact that the Lord uh, wants me to share this. It's going to help a lot of people this morning, not because of me, not because of me. I can't take any credit, but because the spirit of the Lord says so. So I'm just trying to share to my page, um, since I'm on my cooking page, so give me just a second. Uh, how do I get it to my, oh God, I'm sorry y'all. I don't know how I can share this to my page. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, okay, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not going to let that distract me because for some reason I can't share it. So good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hi. Hi, Leroy, Cheryl. I see everybody. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, so I wanted to come on and talk to you all a little bit about something that um, that the Lord put on my heart. And first, let me say this. I want to thank everybody, all of the new followers and everybody who follows me on this page. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Um, I can't express it. I really cannot because I can't put into words how you all make me feel. Um, and how you all have been such an encouragement to me and a blessing to me and my family. Um, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, your presence means a lot. And I just want to thank the new people that have joined. Thank you for being here. I hope that you enjoy <laughs> my page. Um, I felt kind of convicted a little while ago. You know, I just feel like the Lord has blessed me with this platform. And yes, I cook. I love to cook. It's a it's one of my first loves, but my very first love is Jesus Christ. And even though I've only really been walking with the Lord about almost three years, maybe a little over that, I, I feel compelled to share my testimony. I feel compelled to share the gospel of Jesus because that's what's the first thing in my life. Before cooking comes him. So if you're here for the food this morning, I'm sorry. I will come back and cook with you. But I have to do this. I have to be obedient because God is the one who put me here. So I have to obey. So let's get on right on into it. Um, man, this is so good. It just, it's been blessing me because it's something that I'm dealing with right now. Um, but how many of you struggle with uh, thinking negative things? Uh, especially when, um, let's just say um, you're a parent and... Your child was supposed to be home off the school bus uh, at 4 o'clock, but it's 425. How many of you immediately go to thinking something happened? Or uh, your significant other, you reach out to them via text and they don't respond back and it's been an hour, two hours. And you start thinking, oh, they doing this. They're with this person. Oh, I know they're cheating. 
none of that is of God. And this morning, I'm really talking to believers because God wants us to be free in our minds and in our thinkings. And I put some scriptures at the top um, of the video, but I'm going to go over them with you. And I'm going to share something really powerful with you that I'm telling you, it will help you to get free in your mind and in your thinking. And I'm going to show you some ways, three ways that you can overcome your negative thoughts. And I'm going to share a testimony with you. Um, it's sometimes it's hard to share things because y'all it's, you know, it's like I be going through stuff and then the Lord wants me to come on and, and share it. And I'm like, Lord, they all, you know, sometimes we have to just get us out the way and do what thus says the Lord. Because when we become followers of Jesus, our reputation goes out the window. We cannot be worried about what people are going to think. Um, we just can't. So the first scripture I wanted to share with you is Isaiah 26 and 3. And again, you don't have to worry about writing it down. It's at the very top of the video. So you can go back later and write them down and look them up. Look them up. I'm telling you, if you are struggling with this, this is going to help you. And I want you to write these scriptures down and keep them. Put them up on little postcards. Keep them in your wallet. They're going to help you. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, you will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. He will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. So keep that in mind. Philippians 4 and 8 says that we are to think on things that are true, things that are noble, things that are right, things that are pure, things that are lovely. And it says whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. The Bible is full of um, answers. It's full of answers. Sometimes we say, God, this, God, why that? Or how am I supposed to do this? But really all of the answers that we look for are in the word of God. We just have to actually look them up. Romans 12 and 2 says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. We have to be transformed in our minds. Second Timothy 1 and 7 says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. And that's one that I'm really, really clinging on to in this particular season of my life. And I'm going to share with you why. And then second Corinthians 10 and 5 that we are to cast down imaginations, cast down imaginations. Those are those thoughts that come into your mind. They're not from God. They're things that you just thinking all this negative stuff. No, cast that down. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So when those thoughts come, we have to cast them down, especially those things that are coming that are going against what God's word says. So when your child is laid off the bus and you get that thought, somebody kidnapped my child or something is wrong, that is not of Christ. That's not God giving you those thoughts. That's the enemy because that's a way he can come in. Our minds are one of the ways that the enemy comes in because he know if he can get you in your mind, he got you. If he can get you in your mind, he will have you all over in la la land. That's how people commit murder and everything. He gets into their minds and oh my God, y'all, this is so good. I want to share a testimony with you that, um, you know, I didn't even realize I had this problem. You know, God is so good. And I often share with people that, you know, when we get saved and, you know, if you had an issue with drinking or fornication, man, when that stuff, that stuff is surface sins. I'm going to tell you something. That stuff be surface sins because when God starts dealing with you and he deliver you from that and deliver you from that, there's going to be something else that you need to be delivered from. There's going to always be something that we need to be delivered from. That's why we never going to reach that place of perfection until we get to heaven and even then we'll never be greater than God. But while we're here on earth, even when you're saved, you're going to need God to help you with something. And so even though I no longer drink, God deliver me from alcohol. Hallelujah. I thank God every day. I was just thanking God. I, I thank him all the time about that, y'all. Because if you know my testimony, I used to drink every day. I mean, every day I needed alcohol to cope through my life. I needed alcohol to cope. OK, but I am a witness today that God can and will deliver you if you struggle with alcohol. But anyway, um, uh, the Lord was uh, dealing with me about something. I, I, I got upset about some things uh, with my fiance and I, I shared this with him yesterday and I was going to God and I'm like, God, you know, I'm telling him what the issue is, but I'm talking about him. And the more I talked about him, God began to show things about me that I needed to do. And I'm like, 
Okay, so the Lord showed me how my thoughts, my mind needed to be transformed, how my thinking was messed up. Because I'm going to tell you something, and it's, it's, it's embarrassing to share this, but I'm going to share it anyway because it's going to help somebody. Um, so this this happened a little while ago. Um, basically, I text my fiance and he didn't respond back or something but then it, it would either way it go I can't get into the story because it's too long but my mind started to tell me all of these things and before I knew it I had started texting him based off of what I was thinking I had made up a story in my mind as to why he hadn't texted me back and I'm just going out and blah 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 and blah 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 and do you know the next day when I found out the truth I felt this big I felt so bad and I knew at that moment that I had to do something different. I knew right then I said, I can never allow this to happen again. I just can't. And I don't know about you, but then as God showed me that how our thoughts, we have to, okay, let me share this with you. I have three ways of what we need to do to control this thing so the, or to get it into, get, take it into captivity. The first thing we have to do when negative thoughts come is we have to cast them down. So when the negative thought enters your mind, the first thing you need to do is cast it down because you will know whether or not it's from God because is it negative or is it positive? OK, is it good or is it bad? God is not going to put bad thoughts into your mind. That's one thing we got to get right there. God is not going to put a lot of the things that come to our mind in our mind. He's not going to do that because he's not like that. And that's why we have to get to know him, to know how he is and know his word. The second thing is we have to speak God's word out loud. We have to speak it out loud. So that's why I gave you those scriptures. So when the thought comes, the first thing you do is say, no, no, that's not of God. That is not of God. And then you speak the word of God. You will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. God, you have not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. And the third thing you do is you pray and then you believe. You pray and then you believe. You say, God, now I bring this thing to you. I don't know why I'm feeling anxious. I don't know why I'm full of fear right now, but God, I give it to you and I trust you and I trust your word. And then we have to leave it there. Now, I know that sounds simple, but I promise you the more that you do it, the more that you do it, the better you will get. And the thing about it, y'all, is God's word is for us. It's not for him. He tells us to do things in his word so that we can have peace, so that we can have joy. Do you know how much peace you'll have if you just do what the word of God say? If we just take into captivity every thought, that means every time a negative thought come to you, you cast that thing out and you speak the word of God and you pray and you believe and you worship God. You're going to stay in a constant place of joy and in a constant place of peace. I, and, and I'm telling you, God is working on me with this. So... It works. So the other day, it just happened the other day. Same thing. I text my fiance about something. And the first thing the enemy did was brought these thoughts to my mind. And you know what I did? I casted it down. And then I began to pray and I spoke God's word. And I, I, I just shared this with my aunt. And within 10 minutes, within 10 minutes, I'm not kidding y'all. The peace of God filled my heart. And the thoughts that the enemy told me were not true. They were not true. And I found out without even saying nothing. I found out without even assuming. So the enemy is a liar and he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. It's a reason why he put those thoughts in your mind. It's a reason why he's telling you those things. It's a reason he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And this can, and I'm telling you, jacked up thinking can destroy your relationships. I was in a relationship with somebody and because of their thinking, it pushed me away. It drove me away. I'm telling you what I know. It drove me away. And you can't do anything about somebody else's thinking, but what you can do something about is about your own thinking. It's going to bless you because no matter what nobody do, y'all, no matter what nobody else do, you can have peace within yourself just by doing what the word of God says. We have to put it into action. It's just not enough to say the word. We have to live it. We have to put it into action. We have to put it to use.
We have to take God's word back to him. And I promise you he will deliver. He said, my word will not return to me void. God is real and he's true, but you have to have the faith to believe. And I'm telling you, when you speak his word in faith, things happen. I'm telling you what I know as a living witness and somebody else know what I'm talking about. So I wanted to help somebody. The scripture is at the, or at the top of uh, Gloria, because when you're in a relationship, you don't want to drive people away because of your thinking. You don't want to, if you're always the one that's assuming negative things or bad things, that's not good. And you have to stop and ask God to help you because that's not coming from him. It's not coming from him. I don't care if you think your spouse is cheating or whatever. You pray and ask God to reveal that thing to you. Don't react off your thoughts. Don't react off your re emotions. Don't react off of that. We have to let God show us the truth instead of assuming assuming I'm telling you I was telling my girlfriend the other day I said nine times out of ten when I assume something I'm wrong ain't that messed up now I'm just being real about me I don't know about you but nine times out of ten when I assume something because I'm my thoughts are going and doing what they want to do and when I find out the truth I was wrong that's why it's good not to assume I'd be wrong because our thoughts y'all oftentimes they're coming from the enemy He's trying to plant a seed. He's trying to plant a seed in your mind. And if you're not careful, he'll plant a seed. You'll start thinking about that. And he'll take you down the road all the way. He'll have you all the way over there somewhere. And the person who you with trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Because you done came up with this whole story. You done made up a whole thing in your mind that ain't even true. And that's what you living out. You're living out your thoughts. And you done drove the other person away. Y'all, you got to get this. It's so, so, so important, not just in your relationships, but in your life, period, with people around you that you deal with. We cannot live out false thinking. And when God showed me this, I'm telling you, y'all, that's why we got to stay humble. We got to stay humble. Don't ever think that you so high and mighty or you so this or that. Being saved is one thing. Living the word is a whole nother. And, and, and the closer that you get to God, the more you're going to see how much you need him. The more imperfect you see you are, the less you judge people. You ain't going to be judging people when you get close to God because you realize how jacked up you are. Because the more you seek God, the more he shows you you. I'm telling you what, I'm, what I know. The more I went to God about my fiance, the more he showed me how jacked up I was. So the thing about it is God is just like that he ain't finna go uh do what you say to do God is God he knows everything he is God he made everything and he knows everything so why would he listen to you he's gonna fix it to where it's a blessing to everybody that's how God works because he knows the whole picture amen he knows the whole picture so the scriptures again they're at the top but they're Isaiah 26 and 3 he will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Oh, my God. Y'all, y'all don't know how much this has been blessing me because when things happen, I just speak God's word. I just start thinking about Jesus. I got to keep my mind on Jesus. I have to keep my mind on him and it keeps me in peace. Philippians 4 and 8. Think about things that are true, that are noble, that are right, that are pure, that are holy. Don't think about negative things. When they come, you got you to gotta cast it down. Romans 12 and 2. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I'm in the process, but God, I speak it and I speak it into existence. My mind will be completely transformed, completely transformed because I'm going to I'm going to defeat this thing in Jesus name. Second Timothy 1 and 7. God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power of love and of a sound mind. And this is something I, ha I battle with every day because when the spirit of fear try to come in, y'all, I know it's not of God. And I say, God, you did not give me this spirit. That means it came from the enemy. You gave me power, love, and a sound mind. That's the spirit that you gave me. So you have to speak that thing. In 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, casting down imaginations. Cast down those imaginations. Cast down those thoughts. Until you know the truth, cast it down. Don't accept things into your mind. Don't even accept it. 
Take it to God in prayer. Ask him to reveal whatever it is that you think it is. Ask him to reveal it because I'm telling you, that's how the enemy gets in. And when he gets your mind, you the only person that don't know you acting crazy. You going to be the only person that don't know you acting crazy. But you're going to realize people don't want to talk to you no more. You're going to realize your relationships are being destroyed. You're going to realize you sabotaging everything in your path. And you don't even know it because you're the only one that don't know the enemy that crept in your mind and got you thinking crazy stuff and it's worse when we when that happens and we get on social media I hope this helps somebody y'all when I tell you it blessed me it's been blessing me but this is just the season that I'm in and like I said as believers the more we walk with God the more he's going to show us what we need to do. That's why I always say I don't know how people have enough time to be in other people's business examine yourself our salvation takes up enough time just uh working on your own salvation takes so much time every day i'm trying to be a better believer i'm trying to be a better follower of jesus i don't have time be worried about what shanae doing and why this person doing that and why they posting that i don't have time for that you don't have time for that because i don't know when god's gonna call me home and i want him to utilize every bit of the rest of my life I gave enough of my time to the devil, so why not give the rest of my time for God? Now, I ain't perfect, but baby, I promise you, I strive every day to be what the word says to be. That's the whole point. That's all he wants. He know we ain't perfect. He just wants us to surrender to him what we have. Father, here I am. This is what I have. This is all I got. He know what you got because he made you, and he know the messes that you've made, and he wants to fix it. He wants to turn your mess into a message because y'all, when I tell you I was a hot mess, a hot vodka drinking mess, a hot vodka drinking fornicating mess is that a hot mess. I was a hot mess, but I give all glory and honor to God. That's why I cannot have this page and not give God the glory because he did it. There are so many things I can't explain because it's only him. So just invite him in if you have not already received Jesus into your heart. Because the thing about it is people will say all kind of negative things about the Lord until they actually receive him. Receive him today by faith and he will change your life. Confess your sins. He will change your life. I promise you. I promise you. So y'all be blessed. I have to run the Sam's and figure out what we cooking today and what I'm cooking tomorrow. So it's just so hot and y'all know I'm working on the cookbook. So it's like, and the kids are out of school. So <laughs> thank you all for taking your time to come and, and just hear what God put on my heart. And, and my only prayer is that it, it, it blesses somebody. So I just know it's blessing me. So keep me in your prayers. I'm not ashamed of where I am in Christ because one thing I know my soul is saved I know that I'm imperfect and that I need Jesus I need him every day as that song say I need you every hour I don't I just don't have all the answers I don't know a whole lot of stuff and I didn't say a whole lot of stuff wrong and I did a whole lot of stuff wrong but every day is another opportunity to just receive him to just ask him for his wisdom ask him for his direction you know get up and ask him for his direction and his his what what you should do today. Ask him to come into your day. Invite him in. That's all he wants is to be a part of your life. He wants to be a part of your life. It don't matter what race you are. None of that. Because in heaven, all people will be. It will be all kind of people. All kind of people. That's why I'm so big on diversity. Because heaven is not going to be racist. It's not going to be just y'all over there and y'all over there. Because God is love. And love is an action word. <laughs> so we got to put it into action. So... Y'all be blessed. I'm trying to see. Hey, <laughs> I love you all and I will see you real soon. I'm going to head to the store and um, I may cook today. Y'all know them kids when they went on that live last time, y'all, they just acted up. Did y'all see that last live, honey? It was just a mess. I was like, I, I was so embarrassed. So <laughs> I may go on live later, so. I love you. Oh, you want the... Well, I posted the link for the cookbook. Um, uh, I'm going to try to put it at the bottom, y'all. If you haven't got my first cookbook, you can grab it. I always forget to even talk about that, and I, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so if you want the first cookbook, you can order it. 
I don't know what happened to my comment though. I thought I posted it, y'all. So anybody have any questions before I go? Oh. Hold on, y'all. I'm trying to pin it, y'all. I'm sorry. This thing is not letting me. I don't know. I tried to pin it, y'all. It's not letting me. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Any questions? Thank you. Thank you for your time and thank you for everything, y'all. Thank you, Tony, because it's hard. It's hard being transparent, but child, it's like, you know, we just have to make a decision. If we really going to live for him, we just got to throw the rest out, you know, and just live for him. Shari, that song is uh, the song that I was playing at the beginning. It's called... Um, Psalm 23, I am not alone. Psalm 23, I am not alone. That's the name of that song. It's a beautiful song. It's a beautiful song. So, thank you, Judy. Thank you. Thank you. I don't see any questions. Thank you, Liz. I'm glad that you joined me. Oh, praise God. God is good, y'all. He's God. He's God. He's God. Woo. He's so overwhelming. He's so overwhelming just thinking about him. <laughs> just thinking about him. <laughs> Tawanda, girl, listen. They don't always embarrass me, but I think that particular night, I think it was something intentional that they were trying to do. And if you know my kids, it's like, I think they were just doing too much on purpose. <laughs> Aw, Wendy. All right, we'll play this song, and I'm going to go on out, y'all. I'm glad it helped. Praise God. Just think about it, man, and pray about it, and ask God to show you, because he just wants us to be okay. He just wants us to be in peace and, and be in, have his joy. Can you make time? Hold on. For yourself as a working mom to get the God time in. April, you know what? Um, when you're a mother and you work and all of that, the best thing to do is, well, we got to be intentional. But, honey, I just set time early in the morning. Early in the morning. You know, or you have to set time where you know. And, and keep in mind, you don't have to spend all this time. I think sometimes people are intimidated by thinking that we got to spend hours and hours and hours. I mean, that's great if you have that, but God knows your life. He knows what you have going on. What he's saying is make time for me. Make time for me. Even if you give him 15 minutes when you first wake up, give him that. Even if you just sit in his presence and just be quiet. Because sometimes I do that. Sometimes I just sit and I just, God, I'm here. I just show up. I just show up. And sometimes he say something, sometimes I don't hear him say anything, but I just show up, you know, just give him something because if we really believe God is, then we know he is the giver of time and I don't want to return to him and I haven't given him back some of the time that he's given me. Like he is the reason I'm breathing right now. He's the reason I lay down at night and I don't die in my sleep. He's the reason I can get in my car and make it to and fro and nothing happens. I mean, it's like he's the reason for everything. And when you know he is the reason for everything, then you just make time for him more and more. And then throughout your day, you will find yourself talking to him more and more just without even thinking about it. You're just constantly talking to him. God, this God, you know, you just I can't explain it. It's just the relationship. It just it grows over time. It grows over time. So don't be don't think you have to be like anybody else. Your relationship with God is unique. Everybody's relationship is different. It does not have to look the same. It does not have to look the same. And I think that's something that we just get messed up in our minds, just coming up, growing up in certain churches or around certain people. And God wants to deliver us from that mindset because everything that we were taught growing up, everything we saw is not correct. So your relationship is your relationship. Just like every marriage can't look alike, your marriage may not look like their marriage. Their marriage can't look like their marriage because they have to do what works for them. So allow God to, you just, just be real with him and come to him 
and you'll build your unique relationship with him. It doesn't have to look like anybody else's, <laughs> you know, so exactly. It's personal. It's personal. So, you know, and it, like I said, it'll come as you walk with him. That's why it's like, I don't understand how people can't believe. Oh, my God. It's like, it's so real. It's like, it's so real. I can't even say anything else. It's just, whew, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Janet, I am going to be making a, a weight loss cookbook, girl. I'm just trying to get the, this second one done first. And then we're going to do the uh, weight loss cookbook, which is going to be more healthy food. So um, I would have probably been done with this second cookbook if the kids weren't out for the summer. So it's probably going to it's going to take me a little longer than it took me to do the first one. So I'm glad. Thank you all. I love you. Just. And you ain't got to know people personally to love them. I don't want to see nobody perish. You know, I want to see everybody make it to heaven. And that's just what it is. So God is good, y'all. He just wants a relationship. And <clears throat> another thing I just want to share, don't base your blessings off what you have. Do you know that a person who is poor on the street can be more rich and blessed than a person with everything? with every material thing. So however God chooses to bless you, be okay with that. Be okay with that. If God don't give you the millions, be okay with that. Because what's waiting for you in eternity once you transition is way far more than you can ever imagine. The Bible said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has in store for us. So there are things that he has planned for us on the other side. You just got to be patient and be content with whatever life that he gives you. Be content because just be content. Be content with just him and watch how he bless your life. You're not going to be worried about what you don't have. You're not going to be focused on none of that because you're going to be so full of joy that you have Jesus. You're going to be so glad. I'm glad every day that I receive Jesus. I'm glad every day that I'm a believer because without that, I don't have anything. I don't have nothing without that. So now it don't matter what happened in my life. I'm telling you, I ain't ready to die. But if he took me today, baby, I promise you, I'm going to be singing, shouting in, in glory. Hallelujah. Over in heaven. So don't cry for me, baby. So, you know, it's just he just wants to get you to that place. He wants to get us to that place where we're walking in peace and joy. And because life is going to happen. We can't stop it. Life is going to happen. Um, I was trying to put the thing for the cookbook, and I don't know. It's like, and I see people keep asking me. I'm so sorry. It's just, it didn't let me pin it. So, I'm trying it one more time. And then, if it doesn't, it's on my page, though. Oop. What happened to it? There it is. <laughs> It's on my page, y'all. Yeah, it's not letting me pin it. I don't know, for one, whatever reason. But if you go to my cook, well, on the cooking page at the top, it should be pinned at the top. How you can order the cookbook, y'all. So, <laughs> y'all have a good morning. Have a good day. And I'll see you all soon, okay? <laughs> I was just waiting one more minute to see. If I saw any questions, amen. Praise God. Our greatest blessings have nothing to do with stuff. I always say that. You're going to be blessed when you receive Jesus. That's when you're going to know that you are blessed. You are blessed, 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 blessed. The um the thing is uh okay I'm gonna make a post when we hang up because I don't know y'all because this thing ain't doing it. Um <clears throat> uh, okay y'all it just won't pin. Do y'all see the? Do y'all see it? It's like not letting it pin for some reason. I'm trying now. I can pin that. But I can't pin my own comment. I don't know, y'all. All right. I'll make a post when we hang up on the live, y'all. So, God bless. All right. I better go. <laughs> oh, hi, Vicky. <laughs> hey, Marion.